Okay, Romans chapter 2 is going to sort of level the playing field for Jews and Gentiles. If you remember, chapter 1 ended up with Paul talking about how uh, the pagan world, the Gentile world, has just totally gone off the deep end and everyone is just doing whatever they want to do and sin is abounding. And then he opens up the next chapter. He says, you may think that you can condemn such people. Now, maybe he's talking to the Jewish people who might have had some the Jewish Christians who might have had some pride in their hearts, thinking that they were better than the Gentile Christians. He says, but you are just as bad and you have no excuse. When you say that they are wicked and should be punished, you're condemning yourself for you who judge others do these very same things. And again, you can read this, but he's talking about people who have that mentality. Um, maybe, maybe sort of religious people you can relate this to in your church or in your world who are sort of holier than thou, but really who have secret sins and have broken hearts just as much as the people who are outwardly living in rebellious way. And he says in verse 9, there will be trouble and calamity for everyone, circle everyone, who keeps on doing what is evil for the Jew first and also for the Gentile. So remember in the previous chapter, he talked about salvation comes to the Jew first and then the Gentile. And now he's talking about calamity coming to the Jew first and also for the Gentile. In other words, there's really no difference between Jew and Gentile. And that's a theme that he's going to develop as you read on. He says in verse 14, even Gentiles who do not have God's written law like the Jews did, even those Gentiles show that they know his law when they instinctively obey it, even without having heard it. In other words, just because they don't have the Ten Commandments from Moses in their culture or in their in their history as a people, they still have God's law written on their heart. They demonstrate that that is true, that it's written on their heart for their own conscience and thoughts, either accuse them or tell them that they're doing right. And, you know, his point, Paul's point here in Romans chapter two is just to is just to say, listen, everyone's on the same playing field, Jew and Gentile alike. God doesn't have favorites. Jews and Gentiles can be sinners. And also on the flip side, Jews and Gentiles can be made righteous. But see, here's how a person becomes righteous. He gets to it here at the bottom of the chapter. He says, for you are not a true Jew just because you were born of Jewish parents or because you have gone through the ceremony of circumcision, which was a physical ceremony given all the way back in Genesis chapter 18 to Abraham that sort of marked the Jewish people as Jewish and therefore as pe the people of God. And Paul is saying here, no, that doesn't, that doesn't make you the people of God. Some outward mark on your body does not make you a part of the people of God. And, and so verse 29, this is the key verse for today. Here's what it is. A true Jew is one whose heart is right with God. And true circumcision is not merely obeying the letter of the law, but rather it is a change of heart produced by the Spirit. And a person with a changed heart seeks praise from God, not from people. And so this is what he's saying in this chapter. He's, he's saying, hey, don't, if you're a Gentile, don't count yourself out. If you're a Jew, don't count yourself in. Everybody, everybody gets in. Everybody gets to become a part of the people of God by placing their faith in Jesus Christ, not by how good you are at obeying the law or not by your great pedigree or your upbringing or your religious background. And so that's what Romans chapter 2 is talking about. He's going to expand on that in chapter 3, which you'll get to tomorrow. But for now, you're ready to read Romans chapter 2.